So trust can be defined as the willingness to be vulnerable to the actions of another party uh, based on confident positive expectations of that party. So that sounds quite technical, but when we really break it down, essentially what it means is that when you trust a leader, you're willing to rely on them. So you might be willing to rely on them uh, for example, around promotion decisions, around performance appraisals, you know, important issues that affect you. So you're willing to rely on their decisions. You're also willing to disclose information to them. So it could be sensitive information, perhaps you're having some difficulties at work. You feel comfortable disclosing that and telling your leader about that. Now the reason why you're willing to make yourself vulnerable in these ways is because you confidently believe in the leader's trustworthiness. So trustworthiness has three components. We can think about evaluating a leader in terms of their competence. So do they have the skills, the expertise, the knowledge to actually lead in their particular domain? We can also think about benevolence. So does, does this leader really care about you? Do they care about staff? You know, do they really think about other people's well-being and the impact that they're having on other people? And then the final part is integrity, and integrity is really critical. So integrity really is about does this person you know, uphold commonly endorsed standards and principles and values? For example, being honest. Uh, it could be around fairness. It could be around um, if they say they do something, do they actually follow through on that? So when we believe that someone, confidently believe that someone is trustworthy, that they're competent, that they're benevolent, that they have integrity, then we're much more willing to make ourselves vulnerable to them, put effort into following them, um, put effort into our work. Um, and we do that because it doesn't feel risky. It doesn't feel vulnerable because we're so confident about that person and their trustworthiness. Trust is really critical for effective leadership. We know this from many studies. So really ever since the, where leadership first started to be researched back in the sort of 1920s, 1930s in terms of some systematic study, trust has always come out as a central component of effective leadership. Perhaps one of the most influential studies um, was the GLOBE uh, study which looked at effective leadership across 62 societies. And I think it's really uh, interesting that a, a universal factor that came out as centrally important for effective leadership across all of those societies was the idea of leader integrity. Um, and when you look at how they defined integrity, it was defined in terms of trustworthiness, um, being just, being fair to other people. So we know that trust is really critical for effective leadership. If you delve into transformational leadership and authentic leadership, at the heart of those models is the trusted relationship between the leader and their follower. Um, so good strong evidence um, from research that trust is critical for leadership. Uh, if we think about, well, what does trust in the leader enable us to do, like what outcomes are associated with it. Uh, we know that when we trust our leaders, we're much more likely to put more effort into our work, that discretionary effort, well, organisational citizenship behaviour goes up. We know that people um, are more creative, they share more knowledge, um, innovation increases when we trust those around us. Uh, we also know that it can lead to demonstrable uh, outcomes, for example, in terms of performance. So trust in leaders being linked to um, the performance of units or departments, even overall organisational performance. So really, again, good amount of research which shows that um, trust is important not just for effective leadership but also for the outcomes that effective leadership is trying to achieve. Um, I guess the other side of that is what happens when we don't have trust and we know again from research that distrust is really expensive so when we don't trust people in the workplace we tend to get more into the legal realm, we tend to have more stress leave or some kind of people being absent from work goes up, people withdraw from work there's more theft, there's more uh, behaviour which is not in line with effective organisational behaviour. So leader authenticity is really important for trust. Uh, intuitively most people would have had the experience if you're talking to someone and they seem disingenuous, they don't come across as authentic, they don't, they don't seem true to themselves, warning bells go off, you know, intuitively we start wondering, is this person really trustworthy? We start thinking about why are they behaving this way? Why is there this mismatch between how they're coming across and how they really are? So it can undermine trust.
The repair of trust can be difficult. Uh, so it's much easier to build trust than it is to repair trust. In saying that, we do know again that trust can be repaired. Uh, obviously it depends somewhat on what the type of breach has been and how severe the breach is and what type of breach it is. There's good convincing evidence that suggests that it's easier to repair trust after some failure of competence or ability when you just haven't done something at a very good standard or at a good level. It's much more difficult to repair trust when it's an integrity violation. Uh, and there's good reasons for that. We know intuitively that people's performance can go up and down depending on time they had available, maybe how much sleep they've had, um, how much preparation, etc. Um, and you know, we know that performance performance goes up and down. So if someone doesn't perform so well at a particular time, they maybe come across as not as competent as they should be in that situation, we often can be quite forgiving of that. However, integrity failures, people intuitively understand that if someone is lying now, then they could be lying at any point. Um, so those breaches of integrity tend to be generalizable and once they occur once, it's always in the back of our mind that it can happen again. Now in saying that, it doesn't mean that we can't repair trust after an integrity failure, it's just harder. Um, so in terms of how do we go about, how can a leader go about repairing trust, an apology goes a long way. Um, a simple thing, we intuitively know it, growing up as children we're often told, you know, say sorry when you've done something wrong. But we do, again, have really good research evidence that apologies are really important for trust repair. And apologies actually have multiple components, so it's not just about I'm sorry. It's also thinking about really being credible and genuine in the apology. We know, for example, that it's important to acknowledge what's gone wrong, to own it and take responsibility. We know it's important to express some sort of remorse or regret for what's gone on, um, to acknowledge the impact that it's had on the other party, and if it's appropriate to perhaps offer some sort of compensation or reparation, how can you do something that makes it better or easier, that takes away some of the pain that the other party has, um, has experienced through that. Um, and also just that simple request for forgiveness um, is also important. Um, so that, in many ways, a really effective apology that has those multiple components can go a long way in resetting the relationship. After a breach, the relationship is out of kilter and that apology can help to reset it um, and essentially put a line in the sand so you can start anew. Uh, at the same time, sometimes apologies, just the verbal aspect of it can be seen as cheap talk and uh, again, depending on the nature of the breach, it can actually be helpful sometimes to really put sort of hard compensation, some sort of something on the table that can really make amends for them, whether it's um, you know, if it's, if it's something where people have had a financial loss, you know, offering to compensate them in that way. If it's something where perhaps they've missed out on an opportunity, really making an effort to create another opportunity that's of a similar nature. So they're the sorts of things that can be helpful. Also in terms of repairing trust, it can be helpful to have the conversation with the other party to understand how did this impact on them, but also importantly, how did they perceive the breach? Sometimes you can breach someone's trust without necessarily even fully understanding how it looked from their perspective. So part of it can be in the beginning understanding how it is from the other person's perspective, doing that sense making, um, and then that can help you to reflect on your own behaviour, think about how it may have come across from a different perspective, and also offer more ways to think about repairing trust. Another aspect of repairing trust is to really think about what was the area of trustworthiness that was let down. So for example, did you breach competence in some way? Did, the, did you let someone down because you didn't do what you are expected to do at the level or standard? Um, so if, if it's that kind of a breach, it can just be helpful thinking about, well, to repair trust really fully, do I need to think about how I, I can upskill in a particular area? Perhaps it's about refreshing certain skill sets or knowledge just to bring you up to a higher standard. Uh, sometimes if you're leading a team and that team has 
not met expectations and that's broken trust. It can be thinking about how do you enhance the capabilities of the team, whether it's training, etc. Um, if, if in thinking about the trust breach it's not so much competence but more around integrity or more about benevolence, then thinking about well what actions could you take to demonstrate more clearly that you genuinely really care about the well-being of that person or of other people. Um, or if it's more of an integrity breach, really understanding and helping the party to understand um, what went on in that situation. Maybe there were circumstances that led to it appearing like an integrity breach when really actually it wasn't from your perspective. So doing some of that explanations and accounts of what's gone on.